continue with help in projecting uh, things from uh, this point of view. Uh, so some of you are already exposed to this. Yeah. It's a very yeah. important part of the class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks much for taking the class. So, probably you know by your free views there is a required class, right? Who would come to this class without requirement? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone would consider coming in here without requirement? Well, for you. Okay, <laughs> at least at least one uh, halfway lifted hand and one in defense. Um, well, I would teach this class even if it's required. <laughs> so, um, who know who? Who needs physical chemistry? Uh, yes, I understand. But who needs physical chemistry philosophically, generally? Why it is needed? Why you cannot uh, be a happy chemist just by mixing some pure odorless or with pregnancy? What's, what's the reason of this subject? What's it's uh, what's a part of this building block in the whole building? Understanding atoms and what's Yeah, understanding in internal structure, and uh, this is more academic point of view, like just to grow intellectually. And uh, if you go to research, development, teaching, or uh, uh, academia, you can like make theories and, and success. But if you are looking for more applied problems. If you don't care about mechanisms and structures, if you are like real industry, what 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 is in this case? What everyone may need? You don't need to uh, answer out loud if you're not sure, but try to develop answer in, in yourself. And by the way, I'm very happy that you are, uh, some of you are taking notes. It's really uh, critical. Without uh, taking uh, detailed notes, it can be harder. So I applaud your effort. And I will give sign if something is really important. Yes, we should record. So um, you do not need to believe me in anything. I do not have any degree in chemistry. All my degrees are in physics, but uh, I was hired to a different chemistry department. Period of time and got a lot of work. Uh, so the chemistry has two major branches: S synthesis, like fabrication, and characterization. And for uh, like um, major part of the organic chemistry, synthesis, fabrication, and uh, inorganic is also mostly synthesis. Biochemistry is very aside. Uh, but uh, analytical and physical are much more targeted towards characterization. So if you already have some uh, substances, some molecules, um, you can characterize their properties like color, density, order, even stuff. Do not um, And mechanisms of, of, of reactions. So um, if we want Right now, this course will be very academic. Um, next semester, there will be a PCAM lab with uh, more, um, not with me, um, with uh, more practical things like how to measure spectra or mass spectra of, of some things. Uh, and, but we are developing background for characterizing chemicals. And of course, your idea about understanding how things work. So, where did you stop uh, last time? It's at the uh, old maybe record that it was a bad connection. Standing. Yeah, green slide. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We, we, we will get there. So, 
the uh, molecules consist of atoms and atoms consist of positive nuclei and negative electrons and in the And if uh, previous year is posted on YouTube, I have this links, you can listen to it. And I will try to record and, and, and give it to you if you, some of you, if you do not like to read your own notes. Um, yeah, so the problem is, there is no problem with nucleus. If you are taking physics in your high school, give uh, raise hands if you didn't. You didn't. So only only two didn't take physics in high school. The rest, you are my heroes. It's a regular. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good selection to go to PCM. So you, you know that there is Newton equation that uh, like if you have some balls with velocities they will propagate somewhere. So same for nucleus, positive charge, charge nucleus. No problem. There are equations that humankind knows how to solve. But with electrons, now we do know. Oh, some of you know, and uh, we all will know by the end of the course. But um, like 100 years ago, even less than 100 years ago, no one knew how electrons are moving. You know from your um, general chemistry background, high school uh, chemistry background, this SPT orbitals, that they're like ears of bunny or petals of, uh, of a flower. So one electron and it has so many features so it behaves like a wave like a distribution in space and our narrow goal for this course is to absorb the laws of nature that make electron to distribute this way in space on one hand and how this distribution space will propagate on the other hand and if you look more generally how to get properties of your molecules out of this Years of bias of uh, this uh, distribution of space. Okay? So, and uh, we are investing a little of time uh, at the beginning generally for the task. So, it is an object, like if you have a wave of any nature, like if you have one like ball, table, whatever, beaker, you can put position space, maybe some twist angle, and that's it, right? And if you have a wave, you need to point out how high it is at any point of space. It's like distribution, many degrees of freedom. It is a true challenge for math. It's, it's a much, much complicated than uh, just Newtonian uh, motion. What's the easiest object that obeys wave nature and can be understood by human intuition? Sound? Yes. Yes. Yes, I hear your sound. <laughs> you can understand it. What else? Water. Okay. Huh? Light. Yes, okay. But it's maybe not as, as simple. Uh, water. water. Waves on, on the surface of water. What, what else? They all are either three-dimensional as sound uh, or two-dimensional as water. Is there something simpler? Who plays music? Which instruments do you play? Yeah. Cello? Piano. Uh, French horn. French horn? Yeah. OK, same as Prince Louis de Broil, who is one of the developers of quantum theory. Because inside the, uh, the trombone, there is a sound wave. But on the strings of cello and piano, you know, the, there are waves. And, uh, uh, there is a main harmonic when the whole string elongates, and there are harmonics when one half goes up, another is down, like overtones. If you are right, so this is the um, the mathematical description of a string was a great challenge to humankind, to scientific society at the time of French Revolution, and mathematical equations were developed at this time. But then it took about hundred years more to bring it over to electromagnetic waves to quantize the vectors. 
steady waves. If you multiply uh, two waves that are running into each other, you will get nodes and poles, right? So this stuff will stand, and this will oscillate. Okay? And uh, you have set operation of space and time parts. So the space part is one cosine, time part is another cosine. And uh, they are kind of independent. Uh, I, I better write it down, otherwise I quickly skim through slides, but I have a great fear that neither you nor myself will remember what was it. So I better slow down and, and do some scratches on the screen. So even if you sacrifice time. So we do need a little math experiment number two. It's underwriting. Um, suppose we have some functional form, some mathematical function for a wave. But we know that it's very partial. It is very specific example. It's not general. How mathematicians are thinking? Oh, is there anyone who loves math? Then we are on the same board. <laughs> <laughs> so they are much uh, less practical and uh, the mathematical thinking goes not in uh, having something intense, but just uh, postulating general features without any any specifics. So same about waves. If we would be mathematicians, again, uh, we would say, no matter what is the function, it is, it is important which equation generates this function as a solution. So I'm not a mathematician. I'm not inviting you to the one, but we need to borrow a little of this thing. So we need an equation that we will generate this either running or standing wave as a solution. And it's a, it was a big challenge for, for humankind science. We will not do derivations. We'll do more like a little um, show how, how it comes. So we do have the uh, product of time part and space part. And uh, each of them are assigned with this uh, wavelength and period. And um, the experiment will be to take derivatives of this function. So since the function depends on position and on time, we may want to take derivatives over position and time. And since you all are so skilled uh, in calculus and derivatives, you may go up to second derivative in each, in space and time. So you may listen how I mumble, or you can just practice on, on your notes. Just take this product of consigns and take of the overall function. First derivative, second. Uh, I'll try to do the same. Your greens are brighter and you'll be kidding me. I, I'm, I'm sure. We will speed up, otherwise, I would invite someone. <laughs> so, so, it's derivative. Time component and the space component stays unchanged. So this derivative of sine capital times x capital part which is not changed. What is the cosine of the order? Not cosine of the derivative. What is the derivative of cosine? Yes, perfect. Um, I'm a little behind my own, own schedule, but I, I do have good intentions to print a little summer of, of, of major equations I distribute, but maybe it will take me time. So here, prime. The root of, of the sign is negative sign, but negative sign of times derivative of the argument, right? Capital will come to the front, right? No one objects. So it was first the rule. Success. Now let's take the second rule. D second 
So we we yet uh, keep the spatial part unchanged. So we just apply uh, this prime symbol derivative to this. So, and what is the derivative of sine? Cosine is plus, right? So we keep the negative, negative, and then we have this two pi divided by t squared. Because each time you take derivative, the factors in front of our independent variable floats to the to the to the front, right? No one is surprised by this. Loose hands, I, I will be happy to talk about this thing. But minus two pi t squared, and then we get back to the sign uh, two pi t squared. What a great surprise. If you take second derivative of multiplied by that, right? So, and change colors. And this box part is nothing but our original sign. So if you take second derivative over time of our wave, we get this wave function back. It is reproduced times some uh, pathetic factor. Uh, if you do the same experiment, numerical experiment, with derivatives over space, it will be the same result. Taking second derivative of wave function reproduces it back times some factor. Okay? I was practicing at home in New York City. So it is our experiment when we did about time. And if, if you do the same row space, you do the same way. So now, by taking derivatives, we do not change the function. We only accumulate factors. And if you take second derivative over time and over space, we get the function back. Mathematically, no one forbids us to make equivalence, equal sign between these two second derivatives. And we need to uh, make little tricks to uh, take care about factors. So 2 pi squared is canceled, and uh, t squared and wavelength squared are left in, in the And by the way, what will be what will we get divided by length times uh, divided by period? Velocity. Yes. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> and, and it is natural thinking like distance divided by time, it is velocity. Velocity of, of who? Of what? Of wave, yes. Of if, if this wave is traveling, then it will be velocity with which it travels. So if we um, take care of these factors, it will be velocity here. So derivative of wave function over space, second derivative, and derivative of wave function over time, equal itself. And by solving this equation, which I hope I do not have to do, or computers will do it for me, or you will do it as a homework. I am not going to solve it, but as much as I can. But solving mathematically this equation, one will get either traveling or standing wave. Mathematical equation for a wave. Good? Very good. You got substantial leap in your in your course. You know the wave equation. So second derivative over time and over space of unknown function is the wave equation. For acoustic waves, some strings, drums, and for uh, electromagnetic wave, it will be very this type of equation, mathematical equation. For electron, there will be specifics, there will be difference, but overall idea is the same. Any questions at this point? 
any objection. Send email if you are hesitant to say your objections or suggestions out loud. 24 minutes. We are done with uh, let you move. Now we are going to actually get it to you. <laughs> Who can build TV? Okay, with, with hands if you cannot build TV. <laughs> Good, good. We are not engineers, right? It's not, nothing wrong with it. Um, did you ever seen TVs that are not flat screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how does it work? Any idea? Yeah. What? Perfect. But what is scanning through? So it has like cathode ray tube. You guys can teach this course without me. I'll just assign <laughs> shares. 12 people, 40 lectures, about three lectures each. <laughs> and I'm going to just uh, watch it through on the way. Good. So, uh, here is my perfect artistic drawing of this cut of uh, whatever vacuum tube. So, if you, if you create vacuum in, in glass tube, right, and uh, if you create high voltage, yeah, electrodes. So Positive and negative, uh, direct current, no, no, not alternating. Then uh, the electrons are emitting from negative to positive, and they accelerate so much if the if the voltage is strong enough that they will accelerate that they will pass through the electron. And this construction is, is uh, called electron gun. Now, if uh, the, the, there are ways to uh, deviate the electron. Let's forget about it. It's not a TV, it's only electron gun. And then, if we do not have any screen, uh, uh, oh, one deposits uh, zinc sulfide or any other uh, components that will emit light upon being injected uh, high energy electrons. And this is called scintillations. So, if there is no screen, there will be flash in the middle. If you put not transparent screen and make two holes, one would expect that if it emits uh, with some dis dispersion in different directions, <coughs> then there will be like geometric optics, straight line and a little flashes here and there, right? No cheating from my side, all, all good, right? Two points where it will flash. And this experiment has been done, of course, before making mass production of TVs. One did try what, what, what happens. So what happens that there appear flashes in the middle. For sure, I guarantee. They are less intense, but they do appear. And the um, nature, the reason for these flashes, that you cannot think about electron as like little yellow ball that goes on a straight trajectory. It's more like a wave that takes these shapes and it goes simultaneously in several directions. And those little fractions that go in this direction meet each other and, and create a flash. So it's, there, there are more uh, other experiments that prove wave nat nature of electron. I just like this one this year. But <laughs> We need wave equation for electrons. And we, the whole code is uh, building, solving, and finding applications for wave uh, equation for electrons. Whew. This image was done by one of the students in this course. Too. Not the not the sound. The, the, so what, what do you see? Describe. I can play one, once again. By the end of the course, we'll be able to make this easier. Okay. 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 
So it's some uh, uneven wheels rolling, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> who never heard the last name Bohr? Or, or who never heard about Bohr model? Okay, then with hands who have heard about Bohr model? Oh, I'm in presence of it. Highly educated people. <laughs> it's you all will succeed. So you know, um, positive ion, negative electron moves around. It was first model of an atom, and the Bohr model that uh, not any not any arbitrary velocity is allowed for this uh, planetary circular electron, but only preferred, favored, selected velocities, right? And they are quantized. Like it is uh, in our regular life, we have traffic signs that tell no quicker than 80 miles per hour. And quantum traffic, let's say, you can write only 80 or 90, but you cannot write in between. It's discrete uh, permitted velocities. And um, the background for this Bohr model is that. Um, at this time, they do, didn't have theory, but they have like intuitive vision that electron is wave of something, and the wave should be standing wave. So it will, it can exist only if uh, the amplitude of a wave at the beginning and at the end, if it is a circular wave, will match each other. Will have the same amplitude. So this uh, image is. I thought I'm taller. So uh, this is zero line and going uh, uh, green stuff going down inwards or outwards it is amplitude of, of a wave. So this is one amplitude positive and here negative. So if after making a full cycle it comes to the same uh, height, then it is permitted. Right? And then one can have several waves, several harmonics. First, or second, or third, fifth. So the larger num number of these no nodes and lobes on, on the circle, the higher angular momentum. Like this would be P, and this, this would be zero will be S, two will be T, and three will be F electron. Very rough. Bohr is not correct. It is uh, just rough introduction into. Uh, uh, theory of, of atoms. Make sense? You saw these pictures in, in textbooks, right? And uh, they are moving in time and playing sound because everything is moving. We need to, to look how, how things are changing in time. So, a little proof. Right now we are not going into details. But what if the um, velocity of this uh, wave, if the number of number of nodes uh, is set up in such way, such way that it will the end will not match the beginning. You will do it. Yeah. And by the way, some of you did return these booklets to my uh, mailbox. You shouldn't do it. It's for you. You can come and pick it back. Um, so if there are good waves, they will have these um, nodes and lobes. And if there are bad waves, they will be ugly and uh, with a lot of nodes. And you know, correct solutions are always beautiful. If something is ugly, it doesn't exist. Basic argument. Why? Uh, electrons have this SPD and do not have like P and half. It would be ugly stuff. But you, you can try what, what it looks like. So, what is uh, in the Bohr model? You, you have memories about like uh, instead of velocity, they tell about momentum, right? So, just mass times velocity. And uh, then one uh, goes into angular momentum which is momentum times distance from center, right? 
And this stuff is uh, is quantized, is, is taken as a um, integer times a plum constant. Good. So right now I am in front of very big challenge. We could just postulate uh, equations, wave equation for electron. But, ah, forget about it. Of course, do you, do you read science fiction? Who, who doesn't read science fiction? Okay, so most of you do. Uh, did you, uh, Isaac Asimov? You know, like, there is iPhone and there was iRobot, not the cleaning vacuum, but iRobot uh, set of uh, stories. Like uh, half century ago, and uh, this author has, um, I think, this author has a uh, short story, Day of Knowledge, when, um, like, at the beginning of, of year, every like uh, young people and, and kids are going to school only for one hour. Then they are put helmet with wires, and after. Uh, Half an hour, you get your year reports, and then you just have fun the rest of the year. Then, when it's time for next grade, you come on the beginning of the school year, and you are recorded all, all knowledge that, that you you have to do. And then, uh, one of the characters of the story wanted to like be a pilot of a spaceship, but when it was time for entrance exams for a profession, he failed, and he said, "What can I do? How can I trick the system?" And he suddenly found that in addition to this mainstream of uh, brainwashing reporting, there is a very little set of people who sit in libraries and really read stuff. And he started and, and succeeded his, his goal. So if you do not uh, have, if you do not want to have brainwash recorded uh, many equations, but be able to operate and navigate in space of knowledge, I need to step back and give some additional background information which will likely not be asked uh, from you on any exams or in next courses, but it may help you to feel more confident and uh, have more uh, fun fundamentals and background. So generally, we, if, if I would be sitting on, on your side, I would ask myself, okay, waves, but waves of what? What is performing wave motion for, for electrons? One thing. And another what again, same, same question, what is oscillating? Why is it oscillating to positive and negative? Why we have this uh, limits to number of nodes? And now I'm going very, very far. Really far. You you, you can use um you, you all know Newton equation of motion, okay? Give me a little sign if you're hesitant to admit it in public if you are not confident in Newton's equation of motion. Oh, okay, so most, most of you are. Um, so Newton equation of motion is for like material points for like, little balls. And you have just velocity, position and you know how to propagate it in time. This is correct. But there were, Newton was not alone. There were alternative ways how to predict motion of this little box that you replace. And one of them was uh, Lagrange. So it is all uh, time about great uh, French Revolution, when uh, a lot of uh, mathematical developments were, were done for civilization. And Lagrange, uh, he, he was advanced mathematician, and therefore we may hate him. But his uh, main finding, basically, will be very near and dear. He postulated principle of least action, which intuitively the least action is something that is like effortless. Okay. 
Oh, by the way, this, this is Newton's equation, right? Second derivative of uh, coordinate, which is acceleration, equals force divided by mass. And if there are more than one particles, more than one degrees of freedom, it's just the same equation for each. So, hope you understand. So you, you need to look about at 11 feet, right? When physicists who deal with mechanics, just mechanical motion, tell that their goals are successfully completed, what is the goal of mechanics in terms of mechanics? If you know the uh, Newton equation of motion, you know what, what comes out of this equation. And generally, even without any physics, you, you, you can so project, right? Law of motion, how position changes in time. You can give trajectories for ions of inside molecules, or for uh, ions in molecules that do collide before the reaction. Trajectories. And over in oversimplified way, trajectory is uh, position. That's Slates or departs or and trajectory comes out of solution of Newtonian equation of motion, right? Good. But the trajectory can be obtained from different mathematical construction from different set of equations. And later on, we will find that this philosophical background for this additional set of equations will be extremely helpful for everything we do. So I'm, I'm taking, it's not a shortcut, it is a longer bypass, but later on you will feel happy. So, how do you deal with uh, trajectory Newtonian mechanics? How do you deal with uh, physics if you have little both? You always start with writing down formulas for energy, right? For kinetic, for energy which is composed of kinetic and potential. Aren't you? Sure, everyone comes home after a long day and says, oh, okay, what is kinetic energy? Let me write a formula. So, and, um, what is kinetic energy? What is the, which of these equations on the on the board correspond to kinetic energy? Let, let's let's be quick and simple. You wrong. Oh, RT. Great. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, kinetic means something is moving. So it depends on velocity, and the derivative of position over over time is velocity. So velocity squared times mass is T, kinetic energy. E kinetic. Now, which energy is uh, symbolized by term U? Huh? Potential. Yes, potential energy. So potential energy, this is not general. It is an example for like spring, uh, mass on a spring, when it is a harmonic proportional to uh, elongation from, from the equilibrium. But generally, potential energy depends, is, is a simple function of, uh, of coordinate. If we are speaking about like potential of electrons in the um, attractive force of, of nuclei, it is one over R, right? Long, so if it is some van der Waals, it is a more complicated shape. Potential energy, how energy depends on, on position. And now, if you add together kinetic plus uh, potential energy, it will be function energy, total energy, Hamiltonian, which uh, will be which is used will be used in every branch of science, including the uh, Newtonian mechanics. Lagrange was crazy. He thought, why should we add kinetic and potential? Let's subtract. I'm a mathematician, everything is allowed for me. So, 
So if uh, if you add energy together, it is H, Hamiltonian total energy. If you subtract, it is Lagrangian. It's, it's, there is no uh, correspondence in the real life. It's just mathematical abstraction. And then this crazy man thought like, okay, let's do this uh, Lagrangian, which de probably depends on position, velocity. And one can integrate the value of this Lagrangian along the trajectory. Take W, multiply by increment of time, and get the S function. Do not develop internal protest. It, it, it will never be part of, of any exam. It's only the ground. It's a little S. So this S function developed as integral of Lagrangian is known action. And there are theorems that any object in the world is lazy. Mathematically. Any object in the world will perform motion in such way to have this S function minimum. S uh, minimal plus as minimal as possible. Value. So you can just uh, suggest several trajectories by random numbers compute uh, action function for them, and then the one that you give with action will really exist in nature. It's a little crazy way to predict things, but uh, it works. Whew. And if you convert this principle of least action uh, into differential equation, it will be a Lagrangian equation, which is a replacement of Newton equation of motion. Whew. I'm going to return back to more natural stream of narration. There is not, uh, I have distributed the slides, and there is nothing new. It was on the previous, uh, previous one. What is the dimension of uh, angular momentum that is quantized in Bohr model. This question is kind of disconnected, but you, you will see connection to everything we are telling immediately. You know, dimension is like distance times or divided by time multiplied by mass. So what is the dimension of the angular momentum? It's like the, uh, the uh, momentum times like the distance from. Yes, 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 right. And momentum is, uh, is velocity times mass. And velocity is uh, distance divided by time. So this is velocity, distance times time. This is mass, and this is distance. So if you uh, combine all together, it will be distance squared uh, times mass. And we can, you know, mathematical trick. If you multiply and divide by the same factor, nothing changes. Divide by time and multiply by time. And then one can recognize, I know you probably are tired and do not absorb any new information anymore. Um, but if you look, distance squared times squared, it's like second derivative. It's like velocity squared times mass. Mv squared, it's like kinetic energy, times time. So the dimensions of angular momentum and dimensions of action energy times time, are the same. I don't know how to introduce it better, and I'm, uh, I'm going to scroll back. So dimension of Lagrangian is energy, and dimension of action is energy times time, right? So dimension of action is energy time, times time. And dimension of the angular momentum is also energy times time. They are objects of the same nature, of the same dimension. Could you say that one more time? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Angular momentum is important part of Bohr model. On one hand. Action is important part of uh, theoretical mechanics. 
By coincidence, both angular momentum and action do have the same dimension. This is a big prompt for us to, to develop uh, actual equation for, for, for a weapon. So uh, probably we are already, we will be out of time in a minute, but what I'm going to introduce next when we will meet in, in the right time is that when electron is developing in Bohr's model, it accumulates action. So as long, along the trajectory, it accumulates action. And it must accumulate it in the integer fractions. So as long as something moves, the amount of action changes. And then uh, the wave of something, it will be periodic function with action in the argument, like cosine of action. Okay? Enough. Uh, probably you need to run to other other things. I will stay here uh, a little uh, longer if there are some questions. My favorite slide. <laughs> I still want to go on.